Hello and welcome back. Thank you for joining me. My name is Magnus Molina. I'm going to invite you on a journey to have a greater understanding or to gain some more knowledge or information about wheat. But I'm not just focusing on wheat and I'll go through the list. There are any food or product that contains gluten. Now, it's my, this month, um, I'm, I'm 41 years young. And although I might behave like I'm 12 and sometimes act like I'm about 16, <laughs> One of the main reasons why is because I surround myself with children, <laughs> just like my son. Now, one of the main reasons is because I do enjoy life. I mean, this probably comes across on my recordings. And more than anything, I want to be serious about this. I'd like you to do your own due diligence, your own homework with any information I provide. But at the same time, just as a quick reminder, you are a child. I don't care how old you are. Listening to this recording, you are a child. You've probably forgotten this. You might attire yourself like an adult. You might even carry the persona of one. But you are a child. <laughs> when you can discover that child within, you will probably improve your quality of life and certainly your longevity. Back to the question. Have you ever thought or even questioned about the staff of life being suitable or compatible for you internally of course now what i found interesting i've recently read a book by a guy called william davis md and he's a cardiologist and the title of the book is called wheat belly and it's quite simple it really is not the staff of life that was consumed thousands of years ago in fact it isn't even the foods that were consumed probably 50 or 60 years ago we've been so hybridized like you know um, 2,500 times and, and changed and I wanna, what I want to do is to give you some snapshots of information and again don't buy into any of my stuff find out if there's some truth um, but what I will guarantee you is that for those of you listening that are my clients or perhaps considering becoming so my work comes with a guarantee and what I found is as soon as I invite people on a journey with providing them some information or knowledge and require that they stop consuming wheat inches are lost around their waistline their energy levels go up their sleep patterns improve no more brain fog and remember I don't cure you or anyone of anything what I do with the information is allow you to make smarter lifestyle choices so that you can heal your, yourself. So whether my clients have been labelled with cancer, coronary heart disease, osteoporosis, IBS, colitis, you name it, they're the ones that turn it around. And I, put, um, excuse me, I made some notes because I wanted to make sure that I covered all this stuff. Gluten, know thy enemy within. Um, what is the principal source of gluten in our diet? Well obviously we know wheat and wheat has 80% um, carbohydrates and between 10 and 15% is uh, pr um, protein and of that protein about 80% is called gluten and gluten has two strands um, one's called uh, gliadin and the other's called glutenin the reason I'm providing this information for you because you'll probably read about it or hear about it now what triggers the response that could be labeled as celiac disease would be gliadins they're the ones that literally cause all sorts of damage to the microvilli in there and ultimately will lead to things like um, leaky gut syndrome, dysbiosis and some of the signs and symptoms of that would be things like diarrhea and you won't be able to assimilate a lot of the fat soluble vitamins. So what contains gluten then? We know wheat does, barley, rye, spelt, bulgur, kamut and triticale those are the main ones um, so really the invite is for you to go gluten free for at least three months no pasta no bread no cereals no cakes no cookies any of those things take them out of your diet just for three months and the reason I say that is because the chances are your general who, who resides within you has produced an army and that army is already attacking those particles which let's label them antigens that may be in your circulatory system and on top of that they may also be taking on your joints because they're probably composed of the same molecules protein molecules so if you would like the general to stand down you've got to stop feeding him and that could take up to three months and obviously surreptitiously if you suddenly had a cookie or if you suddenly had a one just one slice of bread it's okay you're back again to stage one 
three months from that moment onwards. Now, you may have heard of some of these terms, you may not. Again, do some more homework. Gluten proteins in einkorn wheat. Einkorn is spelt E-I-N-K-O-R-N. And that was really the staff of life that would have been spoken about in, say, the Bible. Now that's different from the emir wheat. Emir is E-M-M-E-R, which is obviously different from the wheat that you consume today, which is called triticum estivum. That's T-R-I-T-I-C-U-M. Estivum is A-E-S-T-I-V-U-M. The reason I mention it is because 14 chromosomes, that's what's composed of the iron corn, and they contain the A genome. But then when you come to the emir wheat, which was most of us would have been consuming that probably a few hundred years ago, that com composed of 28 chromosomes, A and B genome. But today we are consuming the wheat, which is called triticum estivum, and that's usually in the, in the bread. There's a different form of that in pasta. And that contains 42 chromosomes with A, B and D genomes. Guess what? It hasn't been tested to be safe for human consumption. It was assumed back in the 50s and 60s when we were going to have a population boom that we needed to make this filler and it was assumed it would be healthy and right for us, but it isn't. And I'll go through the list of those things that you may have been labelled with by your doctor. So the term I've been using is hybridisation. You may have known the term as genetically modified. It's kind of similar in a way, just not done by Monsanto. I mean, it was done for all the right intentions with the wheat because of the population boom. But let's think of it this way. If you and I went out on a date, let's say we went to, um, I don't know, a pizza place or a pasta place. Do you think we're just going to order the pasta or the pizza or just the base? Hell no. We're gonna, well, what we want to do is taste the bits on top. So it has been used for decades as a filler, but really what it's doing is causing havoc internally for most of you listening to this recording. So even if it's organic, I don't care. It's still not healthy for most of you, not all of you. So my invite is for you to take it out of your diet for three months and then introduce it and tell me how you feel. Probably within a few day days you'll feel better. And I've had thousands of students, over 380 women, over two years on a program where I guaranteed results and every single one of them has reaped the reward of weight loss, energy levels going up, sleep patterns improving, less brain fog, etc. once they make smarter lifestyle choices. And I'm only focusing on wheat. There's pasteurization and there's sugar and there are other things that I've done in my recordings, what I call the, the eight toxic sins. Um, what else? Oh yeah, the other 20% of gluten, or non-gluten proteins, are called albumins, prolamins and gl globulins. And we don't really know how they affect the human body. Another benefit that came out with those people that decided to remove gluten from their diet is that they consumed 418 le uh, less calories per day. That's, in other words, a reduction of 17% less calories. Now, it's not about calories per se. It's not calories in, calories out. That's not how the body works. However, if you remove something, there's going to be a knock-on effect. And with this, it was shown that actually people did consume more, uh, less calories. Now, you may think, therefore, I'm a big proponent towards gluten-free. That's incorrect. And the reason I say that is because just because it's been labelled as gluten-free, it doesn't mean it's any better. Let's just stick with that that's gluten. You may have heard of the term GI, glycemic index. That's just one area I'm going to focus on. Well, if you do um, the research done, whole wheat bread has a glycemic index of 72. Remember, glucose atop is 100. In other words, it doesn't take long for it to break down into the circulatory system, blows your blood sugar. If your blood sugar is blown, assuming that your pancreas is working properly, it releases insulin. And that ultimately is what causes weight gain and other health challenges. Well, plain table sugar, which we know as sucrose, has a GI of between 59 and 65. Kidney beans, 51. Um, grapefruit, 25. And most fish and walnuts are around about zero. 
Well, as I said, if you go for gluten-free, things like corn starch, rice starch, potato starch and, and tapioca starch, they're not necessarily any better because they have a high glycemic index. And the main focus, although I'm focusing on gluten and wheat, is to control your blood sugar. That ultimately is what leads to weight gain and a plethora of other health challenges. So what are some of the um, autoimmune diseases, which by the way is the leading killer on the planet, that you may perhaps have created by making poor lifestyle choices? Well obviously I've mentioned before there's overweightness, there's obesity, coronary heart disease, cancer, acid reflux, liver disease, you'll be uh, nutritional deficiencies if you consume wheat, B12, folic acid, zinc, fat soluble vitamins, those are A, D, E and K, osteoporosis, diabetes, very closely linked, IBS, colitis, Crohn's, diarrhea, thyroid challenges, Hashimoto's, uh, skin rashes, uh, dermatitis, poor sleep patterns, rheumatoid, arthritis, low energy levels, brain fog. And if you think about it, if you just remove nothing else but just wheat from your diet, there's clear research to show your energy will increase your sleep better, you will think clearly, you'll have better bowel movements. I mean, you should be having at least one bowel move, at least one every day. Uh, joint and lung function will be improved. Now, celiac disease is a label which has been given to people who are, say, wheat intolerant. Um, I would probably put that in the same bracket as IBS and colitis. However, there can be slightly small differences in them. One in 133 have the disease, but 1.8, no, sorry, 18 million don't know they have the disease. Interesting, and that's in the US. And ultimately, wheat causes cancer. Hmm. Like I said, there's quite a bit of information on this recording. And I'm not out to... Um, attack the corporations but my invite for you is to do some more homework on what I've shared with you and what you will find or what I find with all my clients and I've had hundreds and hundreds of clients once they remove couscous, kamut, barley, wheat, rye, all those once they remove that from their diet their health improves instantly but the challenge is, because we're so addicted to these products or foods, well, what else? I mean, think about it. Most of you like to have at least one slice of bread every day, if not more. So what are you going to replace it with? Well, the invite is for you to find more whole alive foods. I mean, there's stack loads out there that either one contain eyes, which obviously meats, your fish and so on, your chicken and so on, or doesn't contain eyes, which would be low ground, climb a bush or a tree for, swim after like seaweed. So there's loads out there that you could consume that would better serve you. Now, this is only an invite for those people that want to take control of their own health and then probably pass that on to their children and their children's children. And as always, the proof is in the pudding. <laughs> Give it a go. If you are kind of challenged to make those necessary distinctions, then my invite for you is to Start taking photographs of the food you consume and or have a nutritional diary and just write down the time and what it is. And you will find that by doing that, assuming that you're heading out in the direction you want to go, you will eventually get there as you become more conscious as to what you're consuming. Mm, beautiful. It's nearly 2012. Exciting. Another fantastic year ahead. My love to you all. Create yourself a fantastic day. Bye for now.